What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Of course my name is Gareth from Par Cameras. You know what day it is, I know what day it is. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, which is no different of course, we're going to be diving into Capture One. We've had a lot of comments about doing more Capture One tutorials. We've actually got a bunch on the channel already. I'll try and link them down in the description if you want to go check them out. Everything from getting started, color grading, layers, all that kind of stuff. But today, we are going to specifically talk about using the filters within Capture One to edit your photos. So I'm talking about things like the radial gradient filter, the linear gradient filter, the brush, all that kind of stuff, and how you can use them to create masks. And actually in this specific example, we're gonna use all three on the same photo to shape the light. So really without any further ado, let's jump into Capture One where we can look at the photo. Here it is, I've already done kind of a basic edit to it. I've done a little bit of cropping, straightening, I've done a little bit of color, a bit of exposure, all that kind of stuff. So we've got it to the point now where we're ready to start using the filters. Now, as you can see over on the top left here, I've got my layers and you can see I've probably already done things we've talked about in the previous video. So I've separated my exposure layer, which is in the background. That's where I've done my kind of highlights, my shadows, my basic stuff like that. I've got a different layer for the color. So if I was to turn that off for a second, you can see it goes back to kind of a more green photo. I turn it back on, you can see how much of a, a little bit of a color grade that I've done. But we're gonna work a lot on the light in this photo because there's a lot we can do. Now, of course we have used this photo in previous tutorials as well, which you can go back and look in, Lightroom and all that kind of stuff. But I love the way Capture One works and there's, there's something about the way the layers work that make it so easy using these different filters. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come up to this top left. Now it's important to mention, at the moment I'm working in the exposure tab. I could also work in the color tab, but we're gonna keep in the exposure tab for now. And the first thing I'm gonna come up and do is, is left click and hold on this little plus icon and I'm gonna select new empty adjustment layer. That's gonna give us a new layer. It's empty, which means that it's not affecting any part of the photo. And that's gonna allow us to draw our own mask onto the photo in a moment. Now let's go ahead and name this. I'm gonna call it darken circle. And you'll see why in a moment. This is actually one of the things I love about Capture One. You know, when you when you use adjustment brushes and radial brushes and all that kind of stuff in Lightroom, you have no way of kind of keeping track, apart from just doing it mentally, you have no way of keeping track of exactly what's going on. But in Capture One, you can name everything, then you can turn things off, opacity slider, all that kind of stuff. It's super nice. So we've got the darkened circle layer here. We're gonna go ahead and select the radial gradient mask, which is this little circle icon here. And we're gonna draw a mask onto the photo. So we're gonna come over here, I'm gonna draw a circle by left click and dragging. And don't worry, you can resize it if you do it wrong, but I'm gonna drag it over here. I want this to be the kind of focal area of the photo. I want the kind of, the, the eye to be drawn down this path with the trees towering overhead. And now that I've done that, I can affect the area either inside or outside of this circle. At the moment, it's set to affect the area outside of this circle. And I can do that. I can see that by pressing M to see the actual mask on the photo. And you can see that it is currently affecting everything in red is what it's affecting. So everything outside of the circle. I can invert that if I want to by coming up here to the actual mask, right click and click invert mask. Now when I press M, it's inside, but I don't actually want to do that. So I'm gonna invert it again. And there we go. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring this exposure down. And that's gonna bring down the exposure of everything outside of that circle. So you can see it's darkened everything outside of that circle. And bring the brightness down a little bit as well. And maybe it's a little bit too much, but we can go back and we can adjust it and all that kind of stuff, which is great. And that's something that I really love about working like this. Now that's great. I wanna do a new adjustment layer now. So I'm gonna left click and hold on the plus, new empty adjustment layer. I'm gonna name this one Sunlight. Now I'm just clicking on that, typing in the name, and this time we're gonna use the Linear Gradient Mask, and that's gonna allow us in this situation to essentially bring in something that looks like sunlight. Now of course this is specific to this photo, but you can use these techniques on all kinds of things. Using that radial mask there with the darkening of everything else, or, or, or you can invert it and lighten that area up really helps to make a focal point in the image. I love using the linear gradient mask to actually create the effect of sunlight. So if we look at the photo, the sun is coming in from the top right here. So I'm gonna draw this mask in from the top right. That's just left click and hold. And then let's bring that exposure up a little bit coming in from the top right. 
and the brightness. And you can see how immediately that is now lightening up from the top right. It almost looks a bit like the sun shining through from that area. But we can go even further with this. Let's left click and hold and make a new empty adjustment layer again. Let's call this one Sun Rays. Now this time we're gonna use the brush to actually draw our own mask. And this can be quite handy. I'm actually gonna press M to show the mask. I'm gonna right click, bring the size down a little bit and bring the flow down. Now the flow is gonna affect kind of how much we are actually painting this mask on. So a little bit like opacity, but essentially we can build it up. So if we paint it, let's say 49 or 50 flow, we can paint over it and then we can paint over it again to build it up if we want. We could use a lower flow to actually make that process even, even more kind of refined and, and keep building it up. I like working like that, especially when you're painting in something like sun rays or sunlight, because it allows it to look a little bit more natural. But I'm gonna stick it to about, let's go about 40. And then we can come in here and just start painting in from the top right. Let's paint in some sort of rays here. We're going to just paint down like that, even over here. Now we can always go back and erase some of the mask as well. Let's press M to remove the mask. I like the way we've painted that in, but now let's bring the exposure up on these a little bit. Let's bring the brightness up and let's bring the contrast down and of course now with capture one pro 21 so the latest version there's a dehaze slider as well if you don't see it straight away after updating you can come up here to view to customize tools and then add tool to exposure tab dehaze i've added mine in here so let's just actually bring that dehaze slider down a little bit because it's gonna add in a little bit of kind of atmosphere almost like mist just to make those those sun rays a little bit more pronounced let's bring the exposure up a bit and, and what you can certainly do is play around a little bit with this till you find what you like. Let's press M. I think this bottom part of the mask here where it's going over into the shadowed area is causing us a bit of a problem. So let's select the eraser tool over here and we can just clean that up nicely. There we go, let's press M. That's looking pretty good. Maybe let's bring the exposure down. Now, of course, if you feel like the overall effect of the, something like the sun rays or, or the sunlight or the darkened circle is actually too much and you don't want to go in and adjust every single slider, you can just come up to the top above the layers and just bring the opacity of this layer down. And that is going to really affect that quite quite significantly. I'm going to bring that down to about 80. And then you can go back and you can turn off the layers to see exactly what you've done. And you can make some adjustments from there because sometimes as you're going, Sometimes you can go a bit too far, sometimes you want to refine it a little bit, and it's good to go over it with a, with a pair of fresh eyes. So let's turn some of these off. And with the darkened circle, we've essentially darkened everything else. I think that actually looks pretty decent. The sunlight we've just added in there, the sun rays. We might even want to just bring in a new empty adjustment layer. Let's grab the gradient. Let's call this one dark left. And let's just bring that up from the left here and just bring the exposure down just to really accentuate the sun coming in from the top right. It's darker on the left. And I think that looks really good. We can look at a before and after. Of course, it's gonna include some of my exposure and color stuff as well. But this is where we are now. This is where we started. We have made a huge difference just using those filters. Now, I love using the filters, especially in Capture One, probably mostly in Capture One, more so than Lightroom and stuff like that, because you can name the layers as you go. You can set them on different layers, change the opacity. It just is so easy. It's such a great workflow. I love editing like that. Of course, there's obviously loads of room for global editing, so highlights, shadows, exposure, contrast, all that kind of fun stuff. Color editing as well, so color grading your photo. But the filters really allow you to go in and specifically make the photo your own. You can really shape the light. You can, of course, use this for color as well. So for example, we could come over to the sunlight uh, filter that we've got here, so the sunlight layer. And let's go onto the color tab and actually bring the white balance, make it warmer so that that, that sunlight feels very warm. Let's do the same for the sun rays as well. Just see what that looks like. It's not making a huge difference, obviously, but I think actually subtly it does make quite a nice difference to the photo. It warms up the whole thing. So there's a lot you can do with the filters. It's a lovely way of locally editing your photos in certain areas and just creating a completely different look 
for your photo. Now, if there's something specific you'd like to see in a Capture One tutorial, let me know down in the comments. There's loads that we can talk about, but I'd love to hear what you would like a tutorial about because I love this program. I really, really love editing on this program. So I'd love to hear what you want to know about it. Of course, any questions, pop them down in the comments. There's a full list of kit used for this video, for the photo, all kinds of stuff down in the comments as, down in the comments, down in the description as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.